Okay, let's go ahead and kick it off. Um, welcome uh, to day one, briefing one um, topic we're going to be covering in this breakout session is removing barriers, the process of going from unsheltered to housed. Um, our speakers today are going to be Penny Miller. She is with the Phoenix VA CRRC and Barbara Goh, who is with US Vets. And I'm Randy Elston, I am with Be Connected and I'll just be doing room moderation. Um, my, my video is gonna be turned off, but I will be monitoring the chat if there's any questions. Um, please hold questions for the end of each speaker um, so that they have a chance to answer your questions and focus on, on uh, a good response for you. Uh, if you have questions though, please ask them. Um, and in the end of the slides, there will be contact information if you need further additional information from these uh, resources. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Penny. Okay, thank you. Hello everybody, I am Penny Miller. I am from the Phoenix VA Healthcare System and I am with the Community Resource and Referral Center. I'm the CRRC coordinator. And I'm going to provide a presentation on uh, Phoenix VA Healthcare Services. Next slide, please. So this is our general flyer that we normally put out to the community. It provides a basic overview of what our services are at the CRC. We are known as a one-stop shop for homeless veterans or those veterans that are at risk for homelessness. We are about two miles down the road from the main Phoenix VA. We're at 15th Street and Thomas Road and Suite 106. We put a little picture on there so folks realize that it is around the back of the building. We operate Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4 p.m. and we are closed for most federal holidays, but not all. Uh, we do have a courtesy shuttle that runs back and forth from the main VA to our, our clinic. Uh, we also run back and forth between the Human Services Campus for those of you that are familiar with the CAS Shelter Human Services Campus area. Uh, we do have a relationship uh, with the Veterans Outreach Center down there, the Welcome Center, CAS Shelter itself. Um, we also have a presence down there as much as we can during the week uh, from about 8 to 11. Uh, and like I mentioned again with the shuttle, we go back and forth and pick up veterans that may have been identified down there to bring them up for services. We are a team of 15 total. We're an interdisciplinary team. So we have peer support specialists here. We have administrative social, support, social services support assistance. We have social workers. We have a addiction therapist with our team and we have employment services. Anything that we can meet to basically wrap around the veterans when they present for services to get them up and running. Um, let's see here. We, uh, in the name, Community Resource and Referral Center, it's not just the VA that's in this building. We have our community partners that are normally present as well. I will touch on some of that as we go. COVID did make some impact in how we do business um, pre COVID. We had community partners here all throughout the week. Um, and then when COVID came, it obviously changed the way that we were having interactions. That did not stop us from doing our job every day. That did not have us skipping a beat either. We did uh, and continue to do in the moment services to get the vets connected to the community uh, housing programs and healthcare services. Um, and we're slowly moving back to the pre-COVID days. We're getting there slowly but surely. Um, our VBA rep, Anthony Irby, is normally um, our go-to as well. We still communicate and coordinate with them very uh, every week. Um, and we have uh, several other services on site that I'm going to cover throughout the slides. Next slide, please. This is a very simple diagram to basically demonstrate what the CRC is for the community. Um, the CRC is basically an entry point for veterans that are experiencing homelessness, and the goal is to get the vets to us so that we can do uh, enrollment uh, and do a thorough workups with the veterans to get their needs met. Next slide, please.
As it states there, the CRC serves as a main entry point for veterans experiencing homelessness in our community, and we strive to meet the needs of the whole veteran. Uh, we do this through a very comprehensive housing um, and healthcare assessments uh, with our social work staff for FY21, so fiscal year 21 for the federal government fiscal year is October through uh, September. So we're in the middle point currently, but for last year we did 90, 908 assessments completely. We did approximately 1,069 halves. Those are homeless assessment verification emails. Those are emails that we use between us and the community partners that are providing services to our veterans directly for transitional and permanent housing. Uh, and there was 1,069 of those total referred last year. Uh, I was gonna say in the past few years, I'd say we actually going back almost four, four years or so now, We've been um, working with the inpatient teams, not only with the main VA, but with the community hospitals, as well as the Northern VA healthcare system on helping them do uh, discharge planning for veterans that are identified as homeless. Um, our teams did about 353 veterans last year. So for not just for who is walking through the door, but we're doing a lot of coordination with our hospitals to make sure that the vulnerable veterans, which are homeless veterans, and those extremely vulnerable that are hospitalized are getting identified in place before they hit the street. And then there's some examples there on where outreach occurs. And we currently, uh, due to COVID, have been maintaining back to the CRC to handle the walk-ins and down at the Human Services Campus but our intent is to get back into the community here within the next year. Next slide, please. A very large portion of our outreach is also done through the National Homeless Hotline. This was started about 2011, I think, is when the, the Homeless Hotline itself came out. There, uh, many of you might be familiar with the um, Suicide Prevention Crisis Hotline. It's out of Candidate New York. This hotline, the homeless hotline, was also out of Camden Day One, New York. So it's, a, it's a basically a partner line. It is for homeless veterans, and it can be for anyone that needs assistance as a homeless veteran. It can be a concerned citizen. It can be a Good Samaritan. It could be a family member that can call that line. Those calls are handled in the moment by the, the main line first. They do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They have some very basic services that they can provide the veterans or, or um, concerned person that's calling in. And then those calls are actually filtered down then to each main VA for follow-up. And our homeless programs are responsible for those follow-ups. Just for quarter one for the Phoenix VA homeless programs, we handled 514 calls. Next, next slide, please. HPACT. HPACT is our medical team here. They are the homeless primary aligned care team. And when it says it, it's what makes us a CBOC, a CBOC for the VA is a community-based outpatient clinic. We are a social services driven clinic for the VA, which is very unusual. Um, typically when you know of a community clinic for the VA it is a medical-based clinic. We are social services driven here with a medical component embedded in us. HPACT is unique in that where medical services normally at the main VA are your typical medical clinics where the veterans are called, they call in, they schedule an appointment, they're set out, they come in, they see their provider, and then they're followed by their team. The homeless clinic is a little more, more unique in that they are walk-in services only just as the CRC is. We do not do scheduled appointment. In order to meet the needs of the homeless vets, we have to remain flexible. So that's the same with the, the model of care for the homeless primary care team. They are a small team. They're a nurse practitioner um, as our main provider, our RN and LPN, and then we have an eligibility specialist slash uh, medical support assistant. Uh, he also, he supports HPAC, but he also helps do the enrollment for the vets that are brought to this clinic. The vets that are eligible for services through HPAC, just for clarification, have to meet eligibility requirements for medical care for the VA, and then they cannot be assigned another primary care provider at the VA, and they have to be designated as homeless. 
We don't try to uproot a veteran that's already established with VA healthcare. If they're already with a clinic and they're getting their needs met, then we let them remain where they're at. The goal though is to get the vets that are not connected into our system to try to help uh, address their medical needs. Next slide, please. Transitional housing. So every veteran that walks into the to the CRC, whether what they're experiencing, if they are homeless or imminent for homelessness, we are going to make sure that they have two plans coming out of here, a temporary plan and a permanent plan. The temporary plan is to get them stable off the street, get them someplace where they can, you know, get their basic needs met, get housed, get, get, um, get their um, nutrition needs met every day, get access to care and some case management while we move them forward into what their next steps is for permanent housing. Our current housing program so is a contract with Ozanon Manor. They serve the SMI and senior populations, male and female. And then we have two grant per diem programs that we work with as well, MANA House and US Vets. MANA is for all male, male veterans and then US Vets serves males and females. We have 231 beds total between the community. And for quarter one, we had a total of 185 veterans that were admitted to those sites. Uh, the primary POC for that program is Jeff Wilgill. I put his information down there. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a slide to demonstrate some of the collaboration that we did during COVID. Um, the, when the vaccine came out, veterans, homeless veterans in general were a priority in terms of vulnerability. Um, and in terms of congregate lead, living, when you have a, a groups, group living situations with people close in close proximity, you want to make sure that there are opportunities for vaccinations uh, to, to promote their safety and well-being were addressed. So the VA works with the, the Grand Per Diem programs, and we um, set up the ability to get the COVID vaccines rolled out to those veterans as soon as possible. We did that back in 2021. It actually started when those vaccines first came out and were available. Uh, we did two, set, um, two uh, dates in January, two dates in uh, February, and we're able to administer 165 vaccines. So that was a group effort. That was not just the CRC, that was the CRC, HPAC, GPD, the GPD sites. Uh, and the liaisons that all work together to get that accomplished, along with our medical support teams and the vaccine clinic at the main VA. Next, please. HUD-VASH is our VA, HUD VA supported housing program. This is our the only permanent supported housing program that the VA has direct oversight on. It is a case management program and it is for veterans that have intense, intensive case management needs. Uh, vouchers are available currently through Phoenix, Mesa and Tempe and they're also available through the Housing Authority um, of Maricopa County and we have tribal vouchers as well. There's about 100, 1,060, excuse me, vouchers. Um, and, and for FY22, that's this year, 857 veterans are housed, which is about 81%. Um, with an additional 97 vouchers issued to veterans beginning the housing process. So we have about 91% of the vouchers that are currently in use or, or been issued. Next slide, please. This is an example of what, of what uh, Head Bash does. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, they, they are an intense case management program it's a marriage between HUD, so Section 8, and the VA. The VA is doing the case management piece. They are helping the veterans navigate that housing system. They're also helping them get stable in their, their, um, their social needs and their healthcare needs. So they help connect them to community resources. They help navigate them through their mental health and healthcare services, get them connected to substance abuse um, treatment, and support groups. Um, there's also rec therapy that they have them involved with. Uh, they also promote their own groups as well to get them out into the community. Next slide, please. 
to be eligible. This is a very brief slide on uh, some very basics on what can meet the definition of getting a veteran connected to HUD VASH. Um, but I will tell you the the goal for uh, for the community and for the homeless programs is to get the veteran to the CRC. That's where it starts. Get the veteran assessed. And then we make the recommendation for the um, appropriate housing plan for the veteran. And then if VASH is the recommendation, we get the vet referred to VASH and VASH begins that process with them. The primary POCs for the HUD VASH team is Gina Coda, Tammy Wilson, and Dimitri Natatsos. And their numbers are listed right there. Next slide, please. The VJP program. So the Veterans Justice Outreach Programs um, is part of the justice outreach programs that are under the homeless programs. There are actually two pieces to their, their program as a whole. Veterans Justice Outreach, which is the front end of the system. Those are veterans that are involved in jails, courts, law enforcement, uh, at the beginning pre-adjudication of the system. Those veterans are identified many, many times through the veterans courts, which are on the next slide. And I can show those so that you can understand where they're getting caught, but identified and then connected to care. We're trying to make sure that they're identified as vets and that they understand what services are available to them. Then there's the HCRV. HCRV is the healthcare for reentry veterans. Those are the veterans that are in prison and are within six months of release. So the healthcare for reentry team goes in, they do a lot of education with the veterans that are currently um, in the prison system, making sure again, they're identified, that they're aware of the services that are available to them. But then they also do outreach to see if veterans are gonna be coming out that might be homeless within six months of their release. So they work with those veterans and their, their CO3s to make sure that they are assessed and have a housing plan but very similar with the front end of the system as well. Next slide, please. This is the list of the courts I was mentioning. Many folks have questions about um, veterans courts as a whole. These are the current um, uh, veterans courts that are out in the Maricopa County catchment area. And the primary POC for that program is Chris Wallace, and that is his number right there. Next slide, please. Our final homeless program is the employment programs. Uh, they actually just came to be um, part of our section again. Uh, so it is the compensated work uh, therapy program, getting veterans back to work. It's a very important part of everything that we do for those vets that are able to work. We have a supported employment program, transitional work and community-based employment services. Bill Kyles is our point of contact there. There's his, um, number and extension. Uh, we also have gotten our team back to the CRC as well. Uh, James Montgomery and Michael Keenan are two points of contact that are here throughout the week. Um, so we are we are a full team again, trying to get uh, veterans holistically back on track to where they're, they're wanting to be. Next slide, please. Holistically, this is the Veterans by Name List and Case Conferencing. Uh, it, this is a little bit of a busy slide, but I, it's very crucial in understanding what, what that means. A by name list is basically a list of every homeless individual out in the community. The VA has a special interest in the veterans that are on that list, and we help contribute to that list. So a, a Veterans by Name List is created for um, identifying the veterans experiencing homelessness and crisis in Maricopa community. And we're trying to engage them and give access to as many homeless uh, VA services as possible. Um, a BNL is a critical element for communities pursuing the federal criteria for benchmarks for achieving the goal of ending veteran homelessness. It sounds very large, a uh, very large achieving goal, but we are definitely making our progress toward the, towards that as a community. We have a great relationship with our community partners in, in doing that mission. So um, 
the ideal of this list is that we are meeting together as a team, um, as a community partners on Tuesdays. It takes a couple hours on Tuesdays. I've had the um, experience of getting to do it on Tuesdays with our teams that are just amazing. Um, we go over chunks of that list every Tuesday uh, to make sure that the veterans that are identified are on track and are moving towards their goals towards transitional and permanent housing. And if not, what kind of barriers are they experiencing and how can we as a community address those? So each of us are coming prepared to, to discuss where they're at and how we can help those vets move forward. Currently, uh, the last list uh, was 319 veterans uh, that were active last week. Next slide, please. And that is it, actually. Um, uh, hopefully, I painted a good picture for the main VA and homeless programs and the different sections of us and what we accomplish. Now, if there's some other questions, I know we are going to actually be showing another slide after this. Uh, next slide, please. This is the points of contact actually throughout the state, similar to what the CRC is for Maricopa County with our catchment area. Uh, these are your, your contacts for the northern and the southern uh, points with the northern VA and southern VAs. All of us do very similar work, uh, just in different forms. We may have similar programs, it's just executed differently. And Randy, I don't know if you saw any other questions that I could answer quickly before we move on, or I can hand it over to, to Barbara. Yes, there was just a couple questions um, in the chat box. Um, so thank you everybody for being patient while we uh, had our first presenter presents. Um, we had a question from Patrick. If I am working with a veteran leaving a treatment facility and is VA eligible, with no home to go to and unsure if they have an assigned VA PCP, will the CRRC help with finding a PCP and work with finding housing? Oh, that's a good question. So yes. So um, short answer is yes. <laughs> um, if Patrick, if you're working with the treatment facility, you're welcome to call us. Just uh, again, the number on, on the previous slide was the 602. Uh, 248 and just let them know that's what you, you are calling with is a, a treatment facility and that you're working with the veteran. It helps to have the veteran present if all possible so they can confirm what their needs are. Uh, and then we have a uh, follow-up list with the um, outreach team that will follow up with that vet and you to figure out what the assessment that we can do and to get that veteran connected. Great, thank you. And next question we had was, what kind of assistance do you all provide in helping service members and vets find affordable apartments? Uh, so we work with the community on that as well. We have um, several uh, lists of low income apartments, uh, searching uh, software, et cetera, that we can help them locate affordable apartments that we can provide them, email to them. Um, and we also work with, the, again, the community partners that it, depending on how they're searching for it, if they're doing it on their own or if they're already involved with some of the programs that have navigation that can help them with those pieces as well. Uh, but that is something that we get quite a bit of requests for just through our normal telephone lines here. Uh, is veterans that aren't necessarily needing the rest of it, but they're needing the affordable housing uh, uh, listing. So we have put several of them together to provide to the vets. Great. Uh, next question is, what is the process for a new housing provider to request hud -Bash vouchers? New housing provider. Um, to, so that I'm guess just assuming when they say housing provider, there's somebody that's interested in accepting VASH vouchers, and that would go through the authority, the, the, the city authority that they are located in. So Phoenix Housing Authority, for example. And if you have further questions on that, you're welcome to reach out to us here or um, the contact sheet with the HUD-VASH 
uh, team as well can also uh, would be happy to hear from you. And that was uh, Gina Coda, uh, Dimitri Natatsos, and Tammy Wilson. And I believe the slides are going to be available to the community, so you are welcome to use those that contact information to reach out. Great. Um, and to answer Richard's question, um, the slides, uh, if you would like the slides, um, you can reach out to the our community engagement team at community at arizonacoalition.org. Uh, the the link or the um, their contact information is in the chat box. Um, he says that I work with the veteran inmates in Tucson, and a lot of them are being released to the Phoenix area. So yeah, there's a there's a big um, need for that. So um, next question: How do you serve vets who are evicted? Uh, for those veterans that are evicted or there are pending evictions, like uh, they, they know that it's coming, they are welcome to call us um, or they can come in as a walk-in. I, I, I can't stress that enough. If, if the veterans in need, uh, either contact us directly and, and just ask us the question of how we can, or tell us how we can help you, um, or you're welcome to, to come in as a walk-in during the hours that we're open. Um, if you're currently evicted and on the street, um, please come and we would want to see you at the CRC so that we can help you move forward. Uh, but give us a call. We're, we're going to try to help you figure out what kind of resources are available to you and connect you to the community resources that would be appropriate at that point. Great. Thank you, Penny. All right. We're going to go ahead and shift over to Barbara and she will pre be presenting for US Vets. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Hi, my name is Barbara. I am one of the team lead over at US Vets Phoenix SSVF. Um, if we can start the video, please. I was assigned to Charlie Company 2nd of the 8th. Once getting assigned to the unit, they would deploy us to different areas by helicopters. And on that first firefight, I was scared. I was very, very scared. Guys were screaming and hollering. Chaos, total chaos. Up until to this day, I think about that firefight. That's part of my PTSD. So I was constantly choosing the wrong people to be with because I wanted to be with somebody. <laughs> so I chose this woman and I stayed with her for five years, four years. When you have PTSD, you have a lot of bad habits. And I got with this person and I gave him my money. I told him that they could handle it and be responsible better than I. And for four years, we were supposed to agree to save $200 a month. My name wasn't even on the savings account. So when I left that night, there was no money. I stayed in my car for a week. And I told them that I was feeling really, really bad about myself. Do you want to kill yourself? No, I don't know, not necessarily, but I'm just not that good. I need some help, I'm homeless. US Vets is a nonprofit organization that's main mission is to end veterans, veterans homelessness. There's no questions asked. And it said, this is a high priority case. We had, uh, Everything worked out within probably 20 to 30 minutes. Um, room was ready. George went from his hotel, went straight into our emergency sh uh, shelter services. They told me there was a possibility, a great possibility that they would be able to get me a grant, give me a place to stay, give me some furniture, get me back on my feet.
people at the U.S. Vets were unbelievable. Gave me all the respect in the world. It's really amazing to watch just a difference from one week to another from a person being on the streets to a person that actually does have a roof over their heads. It's truly amazing. The depression rate goes goes way down. And then the, the thought of succeeding and moving forward to the next chapter of their life goes way up. This place here is fabulous. It's fabulous. If anybody sees this, I would just want them to know that God is real and U.S. Vets is real. Okay, we have about 14 minutes left. Okay, can we go to my slide, please? Sorry, coming back from that video, you know, it's kind of hard. Um, just gonna take some time and breathe. Pretty much I'm gonna go over um, what we do here, which is help veterans with um, their needs. Do we have my slide? All right, so I'm gonna be going over SSVF 101. So it's gonna be pretty brief, so stay with me. Next slide, please. All right, our overview would be what is SSVF? SSVF program goals, eligibility, SSVF um, supporter services and additional supporter services. Next slide, please. What is SSVF? SSVF was founded in 2011 by the VA. This is program was to help out veterans and veterans' family who were struggling during the housing crisis. So um, the VA came up with this great idea to kind of have this funding for family of veterans and their family to be able to get into stable housing. Next slide, please. Okay, so the program goal, like I said earlier, is to help promote veterans, get them into a stable housing with usually most of our veterans we work with have very low income, helping them into transitional housing or our goal is 100% permanent housing. Next slide, please. Okay, in order to become, to work with SSVF, you have to have one of these eligibility. Number one, you have to be a veteran. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what service, what branch of service you're in. Um, it has to be anything less than a dishonorably discharged. So we take anyone from um, OTH, um, even if they are just there for a few weeks, we still work with them. They have to have an income of 50% of the AMI. It cannot exceed 50% of the AMI. The good thing is our new AMI just came out not too long ago and it's a little bit higher due to um, the inflection that we have going on right now. So it kind of helps out a lot more. And the other eligibility would have to be, either have to be literally homeless or at risk of being homeless. Next slide, please. Okay, these are a couple of our services that we do. We do outreach, case management, housing search, um, connection with the VA and benefits, like Penny was saying earlier. Um, we work with other um, resources and the most important is temporary financial assistance with them. Next slide, please. Okay, so some of our other services we work with is returning home, um, rapid resolution, shadow subsidies and emergency housing assistance. So I'll go over a little bit about returning home. Usually we want to make sure the veterans are stable and returning them home to their community or where they have support or somewhere they have an, a job you know, opportunity is what returning home is. If a veteran is from California and they want to get back to their um, original place of living and they do have family and support, we work with getting them transport either on the bus or um, any kind of other transport to get back to where they are. Next. 
rapid resolution is um, very important when we're trying to help our veteran not to get back into the homeless, um, not to get homeless. So if a family member is willing to take them in, our goal is to help rapid resolute them before they get homeless. So if a client comes in, a veteran come in and they are, um, they told me they're staying with a family member, my goal is to either see if they can go back to staying with the family member or a situation where it won't be in the homeless um, situation. So next slide, please. Okay, we just got this new um, grant or new part of SSVF, which is shadow subsidies. This is a little bit in between hud -Vash and SSVF itself. Um, basically what it is, is a program that help veterans who are currently in our program, they are working with us. And I feel like if they're gonna be there stable, we have worked with them for two years. You won't have to recertify them for two years and we can help pay 50% of their um, rent. So it'll be 50% of the um, fair market rent, they pay 50%, we pay 50%. And for two years, they can make as much money as they can, saving up the money um, to be able to um, be stable house. So this is actually a really good program because we do have a lot of veterans who cannot get um, can I get HUD bash. However, they will not be able to be stably housed if they don't have any other services. So I feel like um, shadow subsidy is really going to be great for our programs and any SSVF there. Next slide, please. Emergency housing. We had a lot of help with emergency housing during the COVID crisis, um, where if a, if a veteran is either over the age of 65 um, at that time, if they are in their homeless, we try to get them off the streets we usually put them in a hotel or have them stay at the GPD and make sure that they're stable working with SSVF within that time. We get them stably housed or um, we have a window, usually 75 day, 75, 72 hours to 60 days to be able to get them from the emergency housing to a stable housing, either if they're gonna go back to another family member or get an apartment on their own. Next slide, please. Okay, so here, here's our um, information. My name is Barbara again, um, another team lead that is with us. Her name is Jasmine and our coordinator is um, Lisa. Our phone number is out there. We are actually located on um, Central and Osborne in the middle, closer to the VA. We, um, we have a lot, a lot of resources. So if you're in the area, if you need any help, please make sure you contact us. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. We had a few questions that came up. Awesome. Um, let me see here. Um, resources available for veterans with a dishonorable discharge. Are there resources available for those folks? Yes, so we can either work with you, work with them, seeing if they can upgrade the discharge or um, seeing, look, at, look into the DD-214, looking at what happened and seeing if they can work with the VA on upgrading the discharge status. Also, we do have other resources out there. And we work with um, St. Vincent, we work with American Legion. So places, if, the vet, if they were a veteran and have a dishonorably discharge, we're not just gonna let you go. We just gonna make sure we connect you with the other services that's out there. Great. Uh, next question. Many of our veterans may be access eligible. How can the Access Health Plan's veteran advocates coordinate case management with US vets? Oh, easy. Um, we do have a lot of veterans who do have access. So um, like, just give us a call. We're going to do an intakes or um, just speak with them and see what area is needed and we can help them out. Great. Can veterans in stable housing and struggling to pay their bills be eligible for shallow subsidies? Um, at that point, no, but they have to be either prevention and then we can work once the case manager is working with them and they can determine if they are shadow subsidy um, eligible. So in order for them to be helped, they have to be, they have to have either prevention, which meaning they're at risk of losing the place. They had a five day notice, they, um, they lost their job or their income isn't 
not enough to pay the rent. So once they are in that program, then we can work with them and see if we can put them into a shadow subsidy or not. Great. Um, next question was more of a question for me. Um, will we have ability to get these slides? Um, the slides can be uh, requested through our community engagement team. I have posted um, in the chat box um, their uh, email address. Uh, it's community at Arizona coalition.org um, if you want these slides. Also um, on the main page of the, um, the general session area um, of the, uh, the symposium, there is a uh, resource, um, let's see, there's a resource slide um, that has a, a page of resources on there as well. So if you want to access any of that information. Uh, next question for you, Barbara, is, is SSVF a statewide program? Um, for us, well, in the community right now, we have three SSVF, I think is US Vets, we have um, CBI, and also, um, what was it? It was a new, new agency that just came out. I'm not 100% sure. They help out with um, Pinal County as well, as well as Maricopa. For us here, oh yeah, NCHP, you're right. Um, so they do a little bit more Pinal County and Maricopa. For, from my knowledge, we are um, only Maricopa County. So anything outside of Maricopa County, we, we don't work with from my agency. Okay, uh, next question. Will you also work with the spouse of a vet that is currently deployed and facing homelessness? Okay, that is a little bit tricky because um, from my knowledge, when it comes to deployment, they do factor out um, income into their um, pay. So most likely not because that will be the government's already paying their um, rental payment. So SSVF probably would not be able to help out. However, we do have other resources here. We can connect them with wherever city they're in, either city of Glendale, city of Phoenix, to be able to um, help them out with rental assistance. Great. Again, I will be um, sharing the, uh, the contact information for our community engagement team to access slides. Um, it is community at ArizonaCoalition.org. I will post that uh, one more time. It's, it's posted in the chat box uh, twice. I will post it one more time here shortly. Okay. Um, any other questions? Just scrolling through, seeing if we can answer any more questions before our time is up. Um, any one of the Maricopa County housing partners pet friendly? That's a good question. Um, yes. We have been working with a lot of um, apartments who are pet friendly. Um, most of our clients work with their doctor. We can get a doctor to know for um, having a emotional support animal. That's kind of one of the easier way to be able to get your, your pet into your apartment without having to pay apartment um, pet rent or a deposit. So just speak with your doctor and see if you can get any kind of note if they are having any other mental, if, like if they work with a psychiatrist, they can be able to get that note out. And most apartments are pretty okay. They've been working really well with us. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it looks like um, that's most of our questions we, we went through. If there's anything else that you have, for either of the two presenters um, and you want further information, as we said, uh, please go ahead and, and feel free to contact them. I put their, their phone numbers um, in the chat box. So um, go ahead and feel um, uh, comfortable, go ahead and, and contacting them. Um, uh, I wanna thank you all for joining us today. Um, if we did not get your question answered today, um, like I said, please reach out. Um, we'd be happy to uh, get you any information that you need. Um, let's see. Um, the general session will reconvene the, uh, after the following of the break, uh, the second breakout today. Please join us for a closing me message to wrap up. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.